thanks for joining us. Um, and if I didn't get a chance to say hello to you, uh, Paula will do that through the chat function. Um, and so let's, uh, without further ado, let's get underway uh, and talk about um, Madeira, this wonderful island uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. If you have a question while on the webinar, please use the Q&A box, which is at the bottom right of your screen. Uh, and uh, you can uh, type in your question there and likely I'll get to it at the Q&A session, which is, um, which is uh, at the end of our webinar. So bear with us until then and we'll have um, the questions answered. So, so first of all, uh, if you've joined us for many webinars before, you can tune out for the next two or three minutes. I just want to give a little bit of an insight about Wheel and Anchor, who we are and what we are all about. Uh, so, uh, as I say, for, for, for the many of you who've joined uh, a lot of our webinars, you can tune out for a second. Um, first of all, um, uh, and Joel, we can go to the next slide. Um, we, uh, Wheel and Anchor, the mission why I set up this travel community a few years ago is all about bringing travelers together. And so um, I've been uh, doing travel, I've been taking people on trips for 30 years. Um, it's hard to believe, I know, I was uh, 12 years old when I started, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, but I've been uh, doing travel for a long time. And the one thing that I realized in all these years of coordinating trips is, is that when people know each other, when they have even a, a loose acquaintanceship with, uh, with other people that they travel with, you just have a lot more fun. And so we're all about bringing like-minded people together um, to experience some of the amazing things, the people, the places, the food and drink all around the world. And we have a lot of fun in doing that. So that's our mission, my mission at Wheel and Anchor. And specifically for each and every one of you of our members, uh, it's uh, my, my mission is that you become well-traveled and well-connected. Uh, and so when I say well-traveled, and, and many of you have heard me say this many times before, I mean more than just uh, uh, checking off, a, um, checking off a, a bucket list, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's really all about immersing yourself in a culture, and that's part of what we do, particularly on these style of programs where we spend more time in a place, you really, really get to know it. Um, and so every time you pick up the newspaper or you see a, a, a TV, some news or something, you feel like you're part of the place. Um, and along the way in meeting all of your other fellow travelers, the other people that uh, share the same passion for discovering the world, um, you get, you develop these great connections. And I can, I'm proud to say that we've had a lot of people who have um, become friends with other travelers across Canada. Uh, and that's uh, really part of what um, fulfills my mission for, uh, for, for all of us as, uh, as passionate travelers. Uh, so uh, let me introduce our team this morning. So my name is Gordon. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor, uh, and I'm joined today by uh, my colleagues who are in the background on the screen. So Joel Curry, who is a co-founder and provides technical support today for us. Paula, many of you will have spoken to on the phone. She's our senior trip specialist. Uh, and who you will have most likely spoken to on the phone. And our special guest this morning, I'm delighted uh, to introduce Rubina. She's uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the screen above me or below me, depending on, uh, depending on how your Zoom is set up. Uh, Rubina is coming to us this morning from Funchal, Madeira. Welcome. Um, and we're delighted to have you. She's been instrumental in curating this program for us. Uh, you are a born and raised Madeiran, Rubina, are you not? Exactly. Hello, good morning to all of you. Yes, I was born here in Madeira. I live in Funchal. I'm a local guide and it is a pleasure for me to show to all the guests this beautiful paradise, Madeira Island. <laughs> Uh, fantastic. So we're going to hear from more from Rubina in just a second uh, as she uh, explains some of the things that we'll be doing along the way. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, as per usual, um, I've invited you and you guys have all joined me and we're going to take a look through Madeira. I'll be your guide uh, on our webinar this morning and uh, we're going to be um, looking into all of the things that we can discover and learn uh, in, in, this, uh, in this terrific little island. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me explain first of all the concept behind the live away. And so this is a new concept for us at Wheel and Anchor. Uh, and I think that in the, in the context of the new travel, and when I say new travel, 
uh, I think the travel is is evolving, and and the you know the COVID pandemic uh, has certainly made many of us rethink the way we might travel in the future because it's going to be somewhat different. Um, and I'm not talking about the logistics; that's one aspect of it for sure that is going to change. Um, but more and more of our members have come to us because they want to um, really spend more time and, and have 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 a lot more leisure time to uh, certainly enjoy the 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 organized, the structured part of a trip but also have time to explore on their own. And so our idea is to bring our community to all these other wonderful communities and to allow you a chance um, to meet some of the other people there. You can really only do that when you have the time when you're not sort of busy from one excursion and one tour and one uh, outing to the next, but when you have the time to go and sit in a cafe and go to restaurants and, and uh, you know other places where we'll have a chance to introduce you to members of the community and undoubtedly you'll find new friends and you'll get a, a different experience of the place than if you just went on one of those sort of whistle stop type tours so this is our idea behind the liveaways uh and uh particularly at the time of the year like winter which ordinarily many of us would be away from canada uh, i think it's a perfect time to, uh, to to try out some of these places that are not quite as cold uh, in fact they're much warmer than we experience in canada in the winter time but you can look forward to other liveaways as well um the the interest has been so strong that we'll probably start looking at doing liveaways at other parts of the year as well and so i'd love your feedback on that if there's other parts of the world where you think hey it would be great to spend a month there and explore a broader region um, with the comfort of staying in one place. Um, obviously, that's a big part of it is, is that when you go and you check in for a month, um, you really start to feel at home and you know where everything is in your local coffee shop and all the rest of it. So it's just it's a great way to explore the world. <clears throat> so that's the idea behind our liveaways. Uh, and so let's talk a little bit about um, the program in particular and uh, and Rabina is going to give us some wonderful insights. Um, we've changed the order of things a little bit. So we're going to talk first of all um, about the island and then some of the trips we would do from the capital city of Funchal, which is where we're staying. So to answer the question uh, that many of you will have about where is Madeira, in case you didn't already Google it or if you remember where it was from geography class, um, in the middle of the screen, where the red dot is with the wheel and anchor logo on top of it is that is the island of Madeira. So it's uh, off the coast of Morocco, uh, um, more specifically just under a thousand kilometers off the coast of Morocco, which although it is an autonomous region of Portugal, so Madeira is Portugal, um, but like the Azores islands, and as you know, we offer programs to the Azores as well, it is semi-autonomous. So um, Rubina, can, just can you explain what exactly what that means, like what the relationship is to Portugal and how that works? Well, uh, Madeira, it's part of Portugal, but when we talk about being um, autonomy, it means that we have our own government. So that's the difference that makes exactly. So a lot of the rules and 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 yes. and the things, as you say, it's the own government that you would have. That it's not not everything is dictated from Lisbon, but rather you have you you you, there you are make rules, up. But there are rules that are common in the mainland and also here in Madeira, but specific ones only for Madeira. So that's the reason we use that name that we have our autonomy. <laughs> Yeah, which is a great way to be. It's, it's like your own little little state there. So uh, looking at a, a, a zoomed in version of the map of Madeira itself, um, it's not a terribly big island. I think it's about 55 kilometers across, uh, sort of end to end as the crow flies. Um, and um, it's very mountainous, as you'll see from the various pictures here. But from Funchal, the capital, there's, I think, no point on the island that takes more than about two hours drive, would you say, Rubina, um, exactly. to get to. And that's what makes it really optimal for this kind of a program, because we can explore all bits of the island and still be tucked in at home um, in our bed in the evening. And that's, uh, as I say, it's a, it's a big part of what, uh, um, what Madeira is all about. Um, and as I say, there's the, the, the big tall volcanic mountain range that's in the middle of the island uh, and that drops down to some particularly steep cliffs um, on the different coastlines uh, and all these wonderful little towns and villages. But of course, Funchal is the big city. Well, it's not, not big. Um, the population of Funchal, um, uh, Rubina, as I recall, is about uh, is about how many people? 
it's uh, it's around half of our population, so around 120,000 inhabitants. So there you go. So 120,000 people. So that's uh, that's uh, certainly smaller than most of our cities in Canada. It's more like a big town. Uh, again, that's I think a, a positive feature as well is is that um, is a very homey feel to it, and I think a lot of people in Madeira feel like they know everybody else. Um, why is it that we're going to Madeira? Well, just a couple of different points here. Uh, and if you uh, saw our brochure, you you saw some of the um, some of the reasons why we chose it. Well, first and foremost, because we're going in the winter time, um, it has a wonderful climate. Uh, and so they often call Madeira the island of eternal spring uh, because uh, the weather never really drops. I mean, it barely even drops into the single digits. Does it, Rubina, do you, you get much below 10 degrees? Not, not very often, I think. Sometimes, uh, for instance, in January, we might have four or five degrees, but in the mountains. In Funchal, exactly. it's really warm. Today we have 22 degrees Celsius. <laughs> There you go. And so this time next year, we'll be in Madeira, of course, next February, um, 22 degrees. So it's really, really lovely. Um, I wouldn't call it hot. It certainly gets warm in the summer, but even in the summertime, it doesn't get all that hot. So, you know, think about it like a, a West Coast, like a Vancouver, Victoria type of a climate is um, is what it would be like. So that's one big reason is uh, it's a great time to be away from Canada and our colder weather. Um, but I think more than that, um, as I said before, it's a small compact island. We can see a lot from one place. We can get really a sense of the culture overall. Um, the, I mean, the fact that it is Portugal, so the, the cuisine, the food, the wine, um, um, I mean, for those of you that have been to Portugal before, you know, I, I love going to Portugal and, 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 and all the food and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Um, but um, also the history here. And uh, Madeira is, uh, is not just the island of Madeira. In fact, it is an archipelago. So there's some other islands and we will have the opportunity on this trip to visit some of those islands, um, you know, like Porto Santo that we'll talk a little bit about. Um, but uh, I'm a nature lover and, uh, you know, when I see the pictures and we're going to show you some of them here of these dramatic volcanic mountains uh, and the green uh, laurel forests that cover them and then the steep cliffs uh, is, is, is breathtaking scenery. If any of you have been to the Azores, it'll be a little bit reminiscent of that because it's the same sort of volcanic chain of mountains in the Atlantic Ocean that give it this absolutely spectacular appeal. So. Um, that's a, a few of the reasons why we've chosen Madeira and also because it's unique. Uh, there's not really many other trips going to Madeira, certainly not for a month. Uh, and, uh, and, and so it's, 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 it's very, very appealing. Um, so while we're in Madeira, we have, uh, as with any of our live away programs, um, a whole bunch of excursions to choose from. And so uh, just by way of explanation, if you, if you didn't attend our previous webinar um, or read the brochure, um, we've set this up in a way to try to address some of the typical uh, questions and concerns that people have about this kind of a trip. And so um, we've given a, a whole bunch of ideas of some of the excursions that we're going to do. We'll probably have even more between now and when we actually go. Um, but we'll give you a choice of what it is that you want to do. So we're going to give you a whole bunch of excursions. And then part of the trip price is what we call an activity credit. So basically, you can then use that and say, oh, I want to go on this wine tour or, oh, I want to go on this Levada walk. Uh, but, you know, that um, historical tour doesn't interest me so much. So I don't want to go on that. So you can kind of tailor make your own experience um, out of the list of trips that we have. Um, and then we'll have other activities and so on that will organize closer to the date to pass the time. So even though you're there for 30 days, it'll probably go by fairly quickly because we're going to give you as much to do as you want. But at the same time, you can also enjoy it at your own pace and not feel like you have to participate um, in all the trips just because you paid for them. So that's the concept. Um, and when we get to Funchal, um, you know, and it's a bit of a trip because we've got to fly probably via Portugal uh, or possibly via the Azores to get to Madeira. There's no direct flights from Canada. Um, but that being said, it's not, uh, it doesn't take you any longer than getting to, say, parts of Eastern Europe. Um, we'll arrive, we'll settle in, and of course then Rubina is going to take us out for a walk and around Funchal. What can we expect to see in Funchal? What makes this, uh, this city so special? Well, 
It's the capital of Madeira, Saint Charles, and um, it is in here that we have many buildings of the 15th century. For instance, our cathedral, and the guests will have the opportunity to visit the cathedral. And this city tour walk, it's the best way to have an idea of what we have in Saint Charles. So it's like an orientation walk. So the guests can see exactly what we have in the area. And one of the highlights in this city tour, it's our market, fish market and farmer's market, where we do have a great variety of fruits and vegetables. Just you have an idea, we have a lot of passion fruits, uh, banana passion fruit, pineapple passion fruit, for instance. And the fish market, it is unique. We have a specific fish in Madeira, which is black scabbard fish. It's a long fish and black, the skin it is black, but the interior it's completely white. And um, this fish doesn't look nice, but it tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I understand you have quite a number of, of different sort of museums and galleries that we're not gonna put on our city tour walk, but you'll point to them along the way, is that so? Yes, I will point the museums, also where we have the bus stops because I'm quite sure the visitors would like to use the public transportation. And uh, I will show also where we do have those bus stops, the museums, uh, also the main churches, the gardens, the public gardens, for instance, Exactly. And so you, you raised a good point, Rubina. One of the things that we're going to do with this trip is uh, include a transit pass so that uh, you can easily get around the city of Funchal. As you can see, it's built onto a mountain. So there's a bit of up and down there. It's, it's nice for walking, particularly along the main promenade, which goes along the seaside. Um, but at the same time, if you want to venture a little bit out into the outskirts and some of these other places, it's just handy to have a bus. And of course, like Europe, um, the, the bus system works seamlessly. It's very, very easy to get around. And while we go out on our city tour, we'll, uh, we'll give you a chance. Uh, Rubina will show you how it all works um, and how you can get on and off. Uh, and, and that gives you a lot of flexibility to kind of go out and do your own thing. And particularly like in when you go out for lunch or in the evenings, um, there's so many different restaurants to choose from, not just Portuguese, but I think restaurants from all over the world. So um, we'll give you a good sense of, of everything that there is to do um, on our Funchal city tour walk. Um, but of course, really visiting Madeira is all about getting out to the different coasts. Um, and so we've set up a number of different trips. And again, this is just a sampling of them to the different sides and corners of the island. So when we head out on the east tour, obviously we're heading out to the eastern shore. What are some of the things that we might see there? Well, this tour um, goes to the highest mountains of Madeira, which is the second oldest volcanic group. This is an island of volcanic origin. And at the top of the mountains, it's, um, it's good to understand how were the eruptions and how hilly the island it is. Uh, this tour goes to the northeast, where we have a typical village known as Santana with the small houses, the ones that we can see here. Uh, these are very small houses and we see them only in Santana. Um, they are small, but in the past, families were big and they lived all in these houses. And I will explain you how they used to live in these small houses. So you have to come and visit this village Santana. <laughs> um, also in this tour, uh, we have the opportunity to visit the oldest volcanic group that's in Southeast. And it was there that we had the first eruptions. And from there, we can see the North and the South part of the island at the same time. Oh, terrific. And of course, the views are fantastic. They're fantastic on all parts of the island. <laughs> yes. uh, cool. Well, if we do the East tour, then the next logical thing uh, that we would be doing uh, would be the West tour. Um, and the West Coast, a little bit different. Tell us about that. Yes, the West Coast, uh, it's where we have uh, more agriculture. Uh, the terraces are bigger than the ones on the East. It is in here that we do have a lot of banana plantations. The bananas, well, agriculture, it's very important for Madeira economy. And here in the West, we have especially banana plantations, different varieties, for instance, 
silver banana, apple banana. And also here in the West, one of the highlights, it's the sea cliff, one of the highest ones in Europe and also in the world with amazing views. And it looks like that those, you know, those uh, plantations there, those far, those fields go right up to the edge of the cliff. Yes, the farmers are not afraid of heights. They are used to this. <laughs> well, you won't, you won't catch me going and, uh, you know, working in that field because uh, that, 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 that looks a little bit uh, dangerous to me. But um, the, 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 the cliffs look absolutely amazing. Um, and of course, Funchal being on the south coast means that we have a north coast. Uh, and this is where we have some interesting villages. Exactly. The north part of the island, this north tour, goes exactly to the small villages of Madeira. I used to say that this tour is where we have the typical island. And it is in here that we have the oldest roads and those roads are still open. So it means that we can pass along those roads. Something that we cannot do, for instance, in Northwest or even in Southwest. And here in the north part of the island, it's where we have a special factory where we produce our rum, the one of the sugar cane. And it's a factory of the year 1910, where we have machines, old ones, the steam machines that still work. Is that so? So they actually use these, this ancient way or ancient, but this historical way of producing rum um, still today. I, and that's, that makes it fascinating because you really get the sense it's sort of handcrafted rum. It, it, it uh, makes me ask a question. If we, you know, when we tour to these different parts of the island, um, you know, we'll obviously go out, we'll be on a full day trip, um, even though nothing is that far away. But if somebody said, oh, here's a, here's a village or here's a particularly scenic vista that I want to go back and visit again, how might one do that? How, how might one say, you know, we've got a month's time, um, we have a fair bit of free time as well as, as all our organized trips. How do you get around the island? Well, there are two choices. Uh, first of all, the public transportation, but the public buses, they don't run very often in the north. Uh, so what I suggest is first of all, to get a bus plan so the guests can know exactly at what time it's the departure from Funchal to the north and the departure from the north to Funchal. Um, another suggestion is for instance, to rent a car and uh, if the visitors would like to rent a car uh, or even to use the public transportation to the north, of course, I'll be here to help them. And so that's, a, that's a, a, Rubina makes a good point. So what we've arranged is, is that every morning, uh, Rubina will join us uh, at our accommodation and give an orientation, um, point you in the right direction. By then, you know, we'll have recommended some reading material or you've done some own research and undoubtedly you'll uncover things that you want to do. So Rubina that will be there, and of course myself as well, to sort of point you in the right direction to say what's the best way to get there and, uh, and really help you like a concierge service um, so that you get the maximum out of your, um, out of your experience there. So, um, and as far as the driving is concerned, uh, I think that you know, the roads are maybe a little bit narrower than we're used to, um, but as Rubina suggested to me earlier, um, if you travel sort of uh, Monday to Friday, it's not so busy, but because we've got a whole month's time, um, we can avoid uh, any driving on the weekends when all the Madeirans are out visiting their beautiful island themselves, right? <laughs> exactly. The, at weekends, the locals, they love to go to the north and to enjoy the nature and to have a walk. So I used to say during the week, Funchal, it's quiet. Uh, sorry, during the week, the north part, it's quiet. At weekends, it's very busy. <laughs> So there you go. So we'll stay in town on the weekends and enjoy it while, while the locals are out in the north and, uh, and vice versa. One of the big things about Madeira that, uh, that really drew me to, to uh, spending some time here um, was the lavadas. Uh, and so why don't you tell us what a lavada is for those who haven't maybe seen the brochure and what, you know, why these are important to Madeira and, and what our experience of them will be. Well, the lavadas are water channels, we call the water canal. And uh, we have the water channel and by the water channel, the visitors can walk along the water channel. 
we have many Levadas. We are talking about uh, more than 2,000 kilometers Levadas. But there are Levadas in the north, also in the south. In the north, uh, the Levadas, it's where we have especially the typical forest, which is the Laurel Forest. And uh, just a short note, two thirds of Madeira Island, it's protected by the natural park due to this Laurel Forest. This forest has specific trees and plants that you can see only here in Madeira. For instance, the laurel tree, the fetid laurel, our Madeira mahogany. And when we walk in the north part of the island, sometimes we have the opportunity to go to the center of the Levada. To the center, I mean where the Levada starts. We go exactly to the waterfall where it starts the water canal, the water channel. If we walk specially in the south, then we will understand how the farmers use this water to irrigate their terraces, because part of this water, it's used to irrigate the terraces. And part of the water, it's also used to produce electricity. And so when we go on these walks, I mean, you know, we have members sort of of, of, of different abilities. So we have some members who may not be able to walk so far, but others who's, who are gonna to wanna to sort of climb up the highest mountain. So can you give us some sense of some of the different levadas? Because I think there's quite a few on the island, yeah? Well, there are many levadas, a lot of them. It's, it's a bit difficult to tell you the exact number because for instance, we have a levada that you can do during four hours or five hours. And there's another levada that you can do only one hour or two hours. So there are different levadas for different physical conditions. So everyone can do a levada walk. So there you go. So, so if you're somebody that wants to experience a bit of that, we'll arrange it, um, that the walk is a bit shorter. Um, we're never in a rush. We have time. That's why we're going for a month. So we, you know, you'll be able to do just a little bit of it. Um, and for those of you, and I know that some of our members have asked about, oh, I want to, you know, go out and keep active. We'll make sure that we facilitate um, some other more challenging ones that you get to see as much as you can. So I suspect that you could spend every single day of the trip walking Levadas if you wanted to. Sure. <laughs> and, and not see them all. So we'll definitely keep you busy. But I think these are one of the very unique things of Madeira. Of course, the food and the wine, the flavors of Madeira, um, this is a big part of it. What will we experience when we go on this particular trip? Well, flavors of Madeira includes drinks, especially our wine, the Madeira wine. When we say Madeira wine, we are talking about a specific one we call the fortified wine, sweet, medium, sweet, dry, and medium dry. But we also produce our uh, table wines, red wines and white wines. One of the tours then includes a lecture that um, gives the opportunity to our guests to try the fortified wines. And there's another trip where visitors can try the table wines that we do produce here in Madeira. Besides wine, of course, the food, which is very good. We have, for instance, a typical bread, which is made with potatoes or even with sweet potatoes, and also with garlic butter. In Portuguese, the name is bolo do caco, and it's our main bread. Besides the bread, um, we also have a, a very good fish and meat as well. And in one of the tours, includes also a visit to an old factory where we have the typical honey cookies. Also, for instance, the beer cookies. We produce also our beer, the coral. So many things to try. <laughs> and, uh, you know, good question. Uh, Rubina, one of our members asked about uh, cooking classes. Um, are we going to be able to arrange some cooking class classes to understand a little bit how to prepare? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. That was a loaded question. But uh, I, I, part of all of our trips, uh, we're going to put together some cooking classes because I know that it's something always exciting is to be able to 
learn how to prepare some of these um, delicious dishes. So even if you don't see it on the, the list immediately that's in the brochure, um, we have another list that we're going to send out with, uh, with all the booking documentation um, that explains more of the trips. And none of it is set in stone because we're always adding things, seeing what people say, what interests you. Uh, and uh, we want you to have as full of an experience as possible. And as I always say to all of our members, if you have an idea, and this has happened on almost every single trip that we've run, if you have an idea of something that we should be doing, let us know because we're probably going to do it. Um, Monte Palace. I'm a garden lover. Uh, and so this one is particularly special. Oh, it is. This is paradise, heaven in earth. <laughs> wow. Monte Palace Garden. It's a garden that combines art with nature. And um, the garden, it's of the 19th century and belongs to Mr. Joe Barardo. He's a great art collector. And uh, he lived many years in South Africa and, and also in Brazil. In there, Joe Barardo, he started to create his collection and part of his collection he brought to Madeira. For instance, in this museum, uh, sorry, in this garden, there's a museum where we have precious stones from Brazil that he brought to Madeira. For instance, diamonds, rubies, and also along this garden, Joe Barardo has Portuguese tiles, the glazed tiles. It's a huge exhibition, tiles of the 15th century till the 19th century. And along the garden, we have a great variety of plants and trees. For instance, the sequoia. We also have the typical trees of Madeira. Some flowers, for instance, the ones you can see in here, the hydrangeas. And they also have a lot of ferns in these gardens, the tree ferns, the palm ferns. The palm ferns, for instance, they exist since the time of the dinosaurs. And it's a unique garden, very, very beautiful. It's considered Indeed. one of the most beautiful gardens in the world. It's in the top 13 of the most beautiful gardens in the world. And, and because it's spring all year round, we can always see some flowers, right? It's not like some places where you go and it's like, oh, the flowers aren't in bloom right now. But here, something's always in bloom. Exactly. We have specific seasons for specific flowers. Naturally. Because Perfect. The garden, the Mont Palace, it's a garden where we have specially trees and plants, also some flowers, but the botanical gardens, that one included in the city tour, that garden has more flowers. We are talking about 2000 different flowers and plants. Fantastic. So lots of, so for garden lovers, you're in the right place. Exactly. Um, uh, for people who love dramatic scenery, as I mentioned before, Madeira is an archipelago and one of the other uh, places that we'll visit on a boat trip for those that um, uh, that like to go on these kinds is, uh, is uh, the Desertas Islands. Um, and so I'm really intrigued by this because I love to venture off to sort of uh, remote outcrops of rock in the middle of the ocean. What are we going to see here? Well, Desertas, these islands are uh, also protected by the natural park. So uh, no one lives in there. We only have in there the rangers, the ones that are in charge to keep this uh, desertas as they are. Uh, this is, these are islands where we have a lot of birds. We also have in here and only in here, the monk seals, but it's a specific species, the monachus monachus, the Latin name, and this, monk seal, this specific species, you see only here in the desertas. They have a small colony of monk seals. We are talking about 41 at the moment. And when you do the tour to the desertas, normally you have the opportunity to see them. Sometimes they like to swim near the, near the boats. And uh, this desertas, it's a group of three islands, but the guests, they visit the, the big deserta. And um, the visitors have the opportunity to walk a little bit in this deserta and the rangers, they explain what, how it is the project that they have to protect these mock seals. 
And I know whenever we have a, an excursion that involves a boat trip, the question always comes up, how rough is it? Is the seas going to be really rough? Or, you know, what's your sense of the, what typically in February, what might we expect? Well, normally here in Madeira, the Atlantic, it's very calm. Uh, for instance, today it's the 18th, 18th of February, and um, until today, the entire month has been very, very calm. And sometimes the guests, they also have the opportunity to swim in our Atlantic here in the desertish islands. And maybe you are thinking, is it called the Atlantic? No, it's not, because due to the Gulf Stream in Madeira, the Atlantic temperature it's good. Today, for instance, 20 degrees Celsius. <laughs> there, so there you go. Get the breathing tr trunks out. Make sure you bring them along um, because, you know, 20 may not seem warm to some of you, but um, it's actually, it's worth taking a jump in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, trust me, it'll be worth, uh, it'll be worth it. Um, there's more excursions in that, as I mentioned, that we'll be offering, but I mean, we can to talk about them for for for, for on and on and on uh, so you'll you'll find some more details in the brochure as well as in our in additional information document that lists in more detail some of these excursions um, but we also wanted to give you the opportunity for those that are really because i know we have some like super avid travelers that think oh 30 days in one place am i going to have enough to do so we've come up with some so-called weekend options um, madeira is close to some other groups of islands uh, and so we thought we'd give you the chance to check those out. In particular, the other major island that's inhabited in the Madeira archipelago is Porto Santo. Um, so Porto Santo is about, what, two hours, two and a half hours ferry ride away from Funchal? Exactly. It's around two hours. Uh, it's a nice trip, it is, because it's also nice to see the entire coast of Madeira Island on the way to Porto Santo. Uh, Porto Santo, it's also an island of volcanic origin. Um, it's the oldest uh, volcanic island that we do have in Madeira archipelago. Uh, it's a small island. We have uh, in Porto Santo around 5,000 inhabitants, uh, but it's also a nice island. Many things to, to visit, to explore. It's the island where Christophus Columbus lived some years before he discovered America. And it was also in Porto Santo that he got married with Filippa. And who was this Filippa? She was the daughter of one of our Portuguese navigators that did discover the island Porto Santo. And if you like to swim, to enjoy the Atlantic, this island has a fantastic yellow sandy beach, nine kilometers long, unique. <laughs> There you go. And so we can have time to actually walk along this beautiful beach. And so by visiting Porto Santo, by visiting Desertas Islands, um, you can honestly say when you go back home to your friends that you not just saw Madeira like you stopped into the island, but you really saw Madeira and all that's part of it. So um, this is a great little weekend trip that we'll do. Um, we'll also offer the opportunity to fly up to the Azores, which is, of course, the other autonomous archipelago that's part of Portugal. Some of you will know it because we also offer a wheel and anchor weekend trip here. Uh, and in particular, we're going to fly to the largest of the Azores called Sao Miguel. Um, I've been there a number of times. It's one of my favorite, favorite places to go because Lake Madeira, it's a volcanic island. Um, it has massive craters and crater lakes. Uh, and as well as these beautiful green forests, like literally every turn you take, you wanna stop the car and get out and take pictures. Um, it's so breathtaking. So uh, the Azores is one of the trips that we could do. Uh, and the other trip is an archipelago to the south of Madeira, which is of course the Canary Islands. Another place that is very, very favored among European travelers in the, particularly in the summertime, you know, the Germans, the English, they flock down to the various Canary Islands. Um, and being that there is a direct flight from Funchal to Gran Canaria, which is one of the Canary Islands, it's a great way to make. And and uh, I actually have not been to Gran Canaria. What uh, what would what, why would somebody want to go and, and check that out? Canary Islands. Gran Canaria in particular. Gran Canaria, Gran Canaria. Well, it's an island to relax, enjoy the sun, and 
just walk along, along the beach. In the south, it's like this. But if guests want to go to the north, um, in there they have gardens with specific palm trees. They also have a nice garden with birds, especially the parrots, different species. Also in north, in the north part of Rhone Canaria, they have in a specific village, small lakes, which is very rare to see in Gran Canaria because as it is a dry island to see lakes in there, it's rare. But in the north, in a specific village, they have that. And also near those lakes, they have some vineyards and the visitors, they can also try their wines. So there you go. So, and the Canary Islands are part of Spain. So if you theoretically did all of these excursions, you really will have hit up pretty much all of the Atlantic Ocean archipelagos. Uh, and uh, so uh, you, you really would be somebody unique on the block to be able to be able to say that you visited Madeira, Azores and uh, Canary Islands all in one trip. It's possible. Um, if you can come along on this trip. Um, but these are just examples. By all means, you can choose what it is that you want to do. Um, and in any case, that 30 days will go by pretty fast. Um, but we hope that you have lots of time to um, relax as well. Uh, <clears throat> so moving along, let's talk a little bit about the accommodations, uh, what we can expect, how, the, the, where we're going to stay while we're in Funchal. So we spent a lot of time, uh, Rubina was, uh, gave us a lot of assistance uh, in, in selecting the place that we thought would be optimal for this trip. Um, and we've picked this wonderful uh, residence hotel called Florosol, uh, which is in the heart of the Lido district. The Lido district is just outside of the main city center of Funchal, uh, and it's where most of the hotels are located, which means there's a great, there's a plethora of um, sort of touristic infrastructure. There's lots of cafes and bars and restaurants. So it's all within a relatively short walk of the hotel, which means you've got really a choice of, of places to go. And the Florasol itself is a, is a moderate hotel. It's not a fancy place. Um, you'll see from these pictures, um, and this is common for these kind of hotels in Europe. Um, you know, they probably could uh, use a little interior design help. But this is very normal in, in Portugal, although, you know, they don't look super fancy, but they're comfortable, um, they're functional, each of them has um, a kitchen, you've got a little uh, cooktop, you've got a coffee maker, a kettle, a fridge, so you can um, cook up a little something if you're, if you want a snack and don't feel like going out for dinner, uh, as well as, you know, put some cold beers or a bottle of wine in the fridge that you've picked out while in the vineyard. So they're very nice, comfortable apartments. The hotel itself um, has a cozy lounge and bar area. It has a swimming pool as well. So on those warmer days, um, you can take a dip. It's got a billiards room. Um, it's, got, it's got a dining room on site where our breakfast will be served every morning. So it has all the amenities that you need. Uh, and um, um, good question, is there any heat in the room, uh, uh, Rubina? I think the rooms are heated, but they're not air conditioned. Air conditioned is probably not something we need because it's not going to be that warm, frankly. <laughs> oh, but it's February, it's always good in function of the weather. We don't need air conditioning or heating, no. Just the, the normal temperature, it's enough. <laughs> Exactly. So, so uh, it'll it'll be it'll be certainly warm enough, uh, and uh, but we'll get back to you on that uh, in terms of heating. I think the hotel does have heating, but I, probably people don't turn it on very often because, as you say, it doesn't really ever get that cold. Um, but uh, we'll 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 come back to you on that question. Uh, and uh, so, as I say, a lovely hotel, well situated. Um, moderate and frankly, great value for what we're able to offer it for. That's why we've chosen this hotel. Um, Rubina's had guests stay there before uh, and, uh, and have really enjoyed themselves. So um, I think it's perfect for this kind of a trip. Um, what you'll find as well in the brochure uh, is uh, some other information about the trip that's really important, a little bit uh, of further information about the weather, um, what you might pack uh, to bring along. Um, all about um, um, uh, giving a sense of how, how we're going to get around, as I mentioned about that transit pass that we're going to provide. 
uh, and a bunch of other information. So do take a moment to peruse through the brochure. Um, and then we also have another longer additional information document that gives you even more logistics about, you know, the voltage, the electricity and the type of plugs um, and whether you need visas, which of course you don't because it's Europe. So all that information is available. Um, so take your time to look at that. But of course, we're always available to answer um, any questions about that. Let's touch now on uh, the pricing and the inclusions for this program. Uh, again, the details are all there in the brochure, but just so you're aware of it, um, I'm thrilled that we can already offer this program for um, starting at $38.90 in a studio. That's the price is, of course, all in Canadian dollars, or for a, a, a little bit more, you can have a one bedroom suite. Uh, for double occupancy and even for singles the prices are I think quite in line so if you'd like to have your own uh, room in a studio we have those available as well we also have a new category that the hotel has just uh, given us some space for which is called a superior studio um, it's not on the price list here but we'll get you that information so it's a slightly larger studio um, and uh, gives you a little bit more space if you wanted to share that as a couple or uh, you just want a little bit more space as a single. So we actually have three categories of rooms. All the inclusions here, of course, as with most of our trips, um, all the transportation that you need for all of our excursions is, is included in the price, the 28 nights of accommodation, the activity credit of $1,000. So um, so inside of that, uh, you know, roughly $4,000 price tag for the trip, $1,000 of it is you can choose what it is that you want to do. Um, and if for some reason you don't spend the $1,000 on the different trips, um, we'll give you the difference back. So, uh, so if you were looking for really a relaxing trip and you just want to sort of take it easy and enjoy Funchal in the town, um, you can do that as well. Uh, and as I say, it's, uh, it's yours to, to do as you wish. Um, we'll give you a phone, uh, 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 a so-called SIM card to go in your smartphone. It's just going to enable us to stay connected and make sure that, um, you know, we can uh, all get together as a group and go out for dinner and, and be in touch with Rubina if you have questions. So we'll, uh, we'll give you that. Um, we'll give you that as well. And all the other details of what's included. Um, what's excluded on our program, of course, is the airfare as usual. We can facilitate the airfare for you. Uh, and uh, the and I'll tell you a little bit about airfare in a second. And then of course, travel insurance, which we highly, highly recommend whenever you're traveling outside of Canada, um, as well as the other meals and beverages. And in the brochure, I've provided a list of what you can expect uh, to pay for your average meals and drinks and so on in Madeira. And the good thing is it's less expensive on average um, than in Canada. So it's quite an economical place by our standards uh, to go to and spend time in. So, um, but if you'd like to know more about any of that, please do let me know because I'm always pleased to, uh, to answer any questions. In terms of getting there, um, the round trip airfare prices have usually been around 900 to 1,000 bucks uh, Canadian out of Toronto. In fact, I was looking just the other day and they were advertised at 850 um, from Vancouver, obviously a little bit more. Uh, and of course, uh, as I mentioned, airfare, you'd probably use a European gateway uh, like Lisbon uh, with TAP Air Portugal, one of my airlines I, I like to fly on, um, or SATA through the Azores. There's a number of ways to get there um, and we will, um, we will certainly assist you with that. Um, when it comes time to to book your airfare. Uh, so good. Uh, oh yeah, and the early booking bonus. Uh, so this is something that's really special. If you get your name on the list before the end of March, um, first of all, we'll defer your deposit till the 1st of June uh, so that uh, you don't have to worry. By then, we hope that we have a little bit more insight into um, how we're gonna tackle the COVID. And I'm very, very optimistic that uh, um, next uh, winter, we'll be traveling somewhat normally. I'm sure there'll be some um, new regulations that we have to follow. Um, but more importantly, we'll give you an extra $200 uh, additional activity credit. So you'll have $1,200. And of course, a big question is, well, what do I get for that $1,200? Um, based on our full list of excursions, it covers somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of everything that we would offer. So you'd have enough to do um, with that. Uh, and I think for most people, it's probably enough, but for the really active ones, and I know some of who you are that, re that really want to do everything, you, you might have to spend a few more dollars to, to, to go on all the excursions. But this way, you never have the sense that you're 
um, paying for something that you're not going to use. So that's our early booking bonus. Uh, and there's no obligation if you sign up now, um, because uh, we won't um, we won't process the initial deposit until June. Um, so good. Now it's time to get your questions ready. And I see a bunch of them here. So let me try to answer them uh, um, with Rubina's help. Uh, and I'll start. Um, um, here's a good question from Carol, actually. What is the current status of COVID in Madeira? And I think a lot of people probably have the second, the, the same question. How, how is the COVID situation now and, and what's the forecast in the short term? Well, uh, here in Madeira, we cannot compare to other countries or even to the mainland. Here, it's a small island and uh, when everything did started, our government took specific measures and at the beginning we only had two, two cases of COVID per day, certain days we did not have any. Uh, but later when they did open schools, well, things did change a little bit and at the moment per day, per day here in Madeira, we are having around uh, 50 cases, 60 of COVID. And if we compare to other islands or even to other countries, even the mainland, it's not much, but everything is under control and our government is always testing, doing more tests and tests in schools and so on. For instance, at the moment, um, only the schools for fifth and sixth grade are open, the rest is closed. And this will happen till uh, Easter. Um, during the week, um, we have to be back at home at 6 p.m. Uh, at weekends, 5 p.m. So these are the measures at the moment here in Madeira. Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, they're being particularly proactive in light of what's happening. Uh, but the good thing is, is, is that the case numbers are dropping quickly, as they are in many places around the world. Uh, and as the vaccinations get rolled out, um, uh, I, you know, was one of the reasons I think why we, we chose uh, Madeira and Portugal is, is that although it's, you know, it's a bit of a challenge now, uh, but I, I feel that they're, uh, they're going to have the situation well under control. And, and frankly, they're looking forward to a solid summer tourist season uh, already this summer. So uh, by the time we're ready to travel, um, the situation should be much better. Um, Eric and Fran asked if the pool is heated. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that question, Rubina. Do you know if the pool in the hotel is heated? As far as I know, it's not. Probably not. So it's going to be a bit of a fresh one. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll check with you on that one. A um, couple of other questions that I wanted to, that were uh, raised during the uh, webinar. Um, the What's the primary language in Madeira? Obviously it's Portuguese, um, but how, 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 uh, how many people speak English? If you're out in these small towns and wandering around or even in Funchal, um, how is it with the English? Oh, don't, you don't need to worry about that because almost everyone speaks English. At school, uh, English, it's the, the language that we learn already in the fifth grade. And for the children already in first grade, they start to learn English. So wherever you go, you will you can speak in English. They will answer you for sure. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Um, Lenny asked the question, what's the maximum number of people on this trip? Well, Lenny, it's actually a good question. I wanted to, to uh, raise that before. Um, so the maximum number of people, actually, we can accommodate quite a few um, because how we designed this and the other liveaways is, is that everything is sort of organized in groups of around 10 people. So uh, it could be we have a lot of interest in this trip. It could be that we have 30, 40 people, maybe even more uh, on this trip. Um, which would be a lot of fun because uh, it means you have a bigger community to do things and go out for dinner. Um, but uh, all of our excursions, um, all of our walking tours, everything that we do is done in small groups so that your experience of the island, your experience of touring around with Rubina or one of her colleagues um, is, is going to be in a small group. And that's very, very important to me because I know how much our members prefer um, that small group experience. So um, the bigger group may be bigger, 
um, but uh, you know you'll be you'll be divided into these into these smaller groups, and different people will go on different trips. So in some cases, it might only be six or eight people on a trip, um, but never more than sort of say ten to twelve. That's kind of the range that we're uh, we're we're working in. Um, somebody else asked a question about how rough the seas were. I think we answered that already. They're not too bad, even on the way to Porto Santo. I mean, you always get sort of some swells um, on the open Atlantic. So for anybody that's planning on either our Porto Santo trip, which is by ferry or the Desertas Islands, uh, it's best to take some kind of uh, either uh, gravel or have one of the um, special bands that they have. And I find they work for most people. Um, good. I think we have covered pretty much all the questions. If you do have any other questions at all, please do drop us a note, um, send an email. Um, our, next, uh, our next webinar is going to be on Cyprus, which is our third in our series of Little Way programs. We're going to be doing that next Thursday, February the 25th, um, where we'll talk about the beautiful island of Cyprus in the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, so please join us for that as well. And um, um, yeah, and uh, I look forward to getting other questions from you. And uh, uh, we will, of course, send the replay out as well, because um, I know some members had asked uh, about uh, friends that they wanted to share this information with. Uh, in the next 24 hours, you'll get a link to the copy of the webinar um, so you can pass it on or um, look at it again uh, in case uh, there's something that you missed and wanted to check. And there's our phone numbers and our email address. Thank you all for, for coming out. Rubina, thank you so much for giving us a bit of an insight, a taste of Madeira. I know that uh, a number of people have already said they're going to be joining us for the trip. So we're very excited to see you next February. I hope to see you before that. I'm planning to come out there next summer uh, and uh, report to our members from Madeira. And uh, uh, once again, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure and a delight. Uh, and we'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you very much. And I'm also looking forward to welcome all of you here in Madeira. Thank you. Obrigada. That's how we say Obrigado. it. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado.